Welcome to the April 15, 2021 Pharma City School District Board of Education meeting. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Nuccio. Mrs. Bratz. Present. Mrs. Carpus. Present. Mr. Price. Present. Mr. Schweitzer. Present. Mr. Vaughn. Present. Thank you. Well, everybody, <laughs> we're here. I'd like to welcome everybody back in the in-person meeting for the first time in quite a while. Um, let everybody know that the board remains committed to the health, safety, and welfare of its students and their parents, our staff, and our community. But even in these times, the board needs to take actions to keep the district operational now and fully functional in the future. For these reasons, the board will conduct an in-person meeting tonight with limited seating due to the required three-foot social distancing. And we will live stream this meeting to the public in accordance with applicable law. Dr. Smilak, can you confirm that this meeting is currently being live streamed? We can. Thank you. Can you please monitor the live streaming throughout the meeting? And if there is a problem, please speak up immediately so that the technical difficulty can be addressed. We will. Thank you. With that, go to information to the board. Dr. Smilak. Uh, thank you. It's great to be back in person. Uh, we hope that certainly we can maintain this status and as vaccines continue to proliferate. We would hope that there would be no disruption to this better routine. Um, just a few comments on uh, issue 10. It's hard to believe we're now within 20 days until voting begins or the actual election day voting has already begun. Uh, we will continue to make sure that people understand the importance of what is the, the crossing of paths that we're at. We have two different paths that we can choose to go down as a school district, as communities. The paint and patchway, where we just continue to do the best we can to keep our buildings functional. It's a $167 million price tag. We will pay that in some way, shape, or form, and really not get anything other than, as I said, paint and some patches. Uh, we can keep them warm, safe, and dry, but we're not talking about new STEM labs, we're not talking about cutting edge technology, we're talking about specifically making our buildings functional. On the other side, we have worth it way, and we think that our buildings uh, are worth the investment, we think our children, our communities are worth the investment. We have a $300 million price tag for that, but $69 million will come to the state. So we will continue to, to educate uh, our communities as much as possible. We're very appreciative of all the residents who have stepped up to host block parties and pass out literature. Our staff has done a phenomenal job as well, and we continue to urge our public to educate themselves as much as possible. We have information certainly on our website, and we continue to distribute through all of our social media. And look forward to what we hope will be a positive result on May 4th. With that, we will turn it over to our curriculum and instruction department. Our assistant superintendent Tiffany Strapko and Amy Zermatt have some presentations about curricular materials that we're very proud to have in front of you for adoption this evening. Well, it is nice to be back. So today we're going to talk about three things. Uh, this is the time of the year where we spend all year with our curriculum committees and then we put forward our adoptions that are on rotation. So what you see tonight and what you will see tonight on uh, what we are putting forward for your approval is our 11th through 12th English language arts. Uh, we had two years ago adopted elementary, last year we did middle school up through ninth grade, and this is year three, so we will fully have new curriculum and materials and assessments in the hands of our teachers for use of our students um, all the way through. In addition, we're going to give you a preview of what um, we will provide all of our students for the summer school months. If they are not accessing our Summer Academy of Learning and Enrichment, all of our students will have access to a K-8 ELA math learning support um, system. And then I did a curricular uh, adoption for secondary art um, and elementary art. It was the Flex and the Pro. Um, here you will see our secondary materials um, that we are putting forward. Uh, and I want to preview what the plans are with changing some of our course requirements.
District goals increase student achievement, improve transparency, and practice fiscal responsibility. Um, so you'll see all three goals uh, throughout the presentation tonight. And again, a preview of what we're doing. Our last adoption for 11th and 12th uh, ELA was 2013. Uh, we have had standards that have been updated for OGE. Obviously, we're always looking for authentic literacy practice, more engagement with our materials, and that link to college and career readiness. Uh, we need to have that comprehensive digital platform. This is missing currently, right now in 11th and 12th grade, so that is something that our teachers will have. Um, again, Amy will go into detail about our K-8 ELA and math and learning support. And then the 9 through 12, um, again, you adopted the Flex and the Pro curriculum. What you're going to see now is that connection to our 21st century learning, um, creating opportunities for digital integration. So that's the why behind what you see tonight. So every time we meet with our teachers, I feel like we continue to build those relationships. So I've had the pleasure of working with our art teachers since November. And our ODE standards are shifting from projects to process and problem solving, which is really exciting. And so I worked with every single secondary art teacher at the middle and high school level. They were all present. And here's some, some data. 1976 um, was the last time we changed um, our curricular um, framework for art. That's a very long time ago. Another data point is 1997 is um, the year that I graduated from Valley Forge and the registration guide for art is exactly the same. So Mike Jazak, he is on the committee. Uh, he started uh, the year that all those changes were made. So, so to say that they were excited that we are on a rotation and that we are really working um, to integrate um, technology and our uh, resources uh, is an understatement. I did surveys, meetings, but the best part of this was one-on-one -on -one discussions. I went in every classroom and had conversations with our teachers. Um, I toured all of our uh, facilities and all of our materials. Um, and the biggest thing is always to provide our students with experiences with 21st century learning and um, we will do this through our fine arts courses. So this is what I'm asking you to adopt tonight. Um, again, linking to our curriculum that we just adopted uh, and our professional development. You will see on here, we went through a, a process where we looked at our standards and what are our basic needs. Um, so all of our buildings, our, our programs at the secondary level will have a MacBook Pro cart with 30 MacBook books per building. We have Chromebooks right now, but to do um, specific software and we, to use that software, um, we really need the MacBooks. And one of the things that our students will be engaged with is the Photoshop suite included with our MacBook. So when our kids are graduating um, and our, our learners are um, going beyond high school and into the art track, um, Photoshop is a huge thing to have on that high school resume. So now our kids, if they choose not to go into career in tech because they get this option, just the regular comprehensive fine arts program, they will be exposed to Photoshop. In addition, we have XP Pen graphic drawing tablets that link in directly to our MacBook. So with our new standards, we have digital pieces added to that. So our kids will be engaged in that digital drawing. Um, so drawing on a piece of paper or making a painting and then transforming it into that digital piece. Um, in addition, we have photography uh, and we have purchased a class set of digital cameras. Uh, we are using this to um, do more of a, a literature type based um, art programming that you will see when we put forth our registration guide. So looking at not only taking that photography aspect, but creating children's books and doing some of that illustration so we can truly link the authentic literacy. 
In addition, each building um, was allotted the same amount of money for a specialized item. So Parmas Senior High um, has, has decided that they want to purchase a laser cutter, Normandy High School of Kiln, and Valley Forge High School of Makerspace. In our registration guide, we have art topics, um, so this aligns directly with that course. We want to align with our standards, but we also want our teachers to be creative, so they were really excited to problem solve this specialized item. So that is the art piece. We're going to shift over to the ELA for 11th and 12th. Amy worked um, extensively with teacher leaders from all buildings. This is our materials review process. We always look at every course. On every course are materials that are linked to OPE. We request uh, sample materials. We use the same rubric to evaluate standards with the materials. We invite our vendor in for a district staff presentation. Um, we added the DIS component where they practice and um, see how our uh, technology platform works with the digital materials. Uh, and then there's a period of time where it's up for public review. We always have it in the lobby, we put it on our website, and there's always a direct link for comments from the community. And now today is our final recommendation. So this, these are our teachers, um, English 3 and English 4. We had representation from all three buildings, um, representation from our gifted lead teacher, our DIS uh, tech foreman, and Amy led that process. Um, so I would like to turn it over to Amy so she can share the recommendation from our teachers. So, so as Mrs. Strasso said, um, I have come to love working with our ELA teachers. One thing that I've learned, and now that we're kind of finishing up our whole realm of pace and all this, how passionate they are about getting kids books in hand and reading all kinds of authors. So this last round with 11 12, one thing that came to light was that how much they knew about the diverse authors and the ways they wanted kids to be exposed to all kinds of literature and exposed to that authentic literacy, reading, writing, and discussing. And when they went through the process, they really put all three of the companies we looked at, which was into literature, study sync, and um, my perspectives. They put them through, they, they talked with each of those reps and they talked through what kind of text do you have, what kind of diverse authors do you have, what will you have my kids doing in terms of tasks. And through it all, the one that stood out beyond measure was H and H literature. And that name may sound familiar because we do have our K-8 teachers already using that same type of program, but different version because in 11, 12, you're talking deeper, more robust. So in this case, we actually are even getting a more up-to-date version than even we adopted last year because they've added even more text, even more features, and the kids are going to be able to see ongoing updates even more than we had last year. So the exciting part is it still has those focus standards. It still has those opportunities for kids to dive into text, respond to text, both digitally and in consumable writing text so kids can have books in hand and annotate and write notes, but then also provide an additional bank of novels and things kids may not have access to in our library or even that they may not go to our library in the community. So they're very excited about this recommendation. So once again, we're going to do, I'm going to talk next slide about some of the key features. So like I talked about, those texts were one of the biggest things that our teachers were very certain they wanted to make sure met what they do in their classrooms and that they wanted to show this to students. This has the writing text, like we said, as well as all of the writing text ability is able to be visualized. Every type of thing that the kids are doing in a book can be done visually. It connects to Google Classroom, it connects to all of our tools, and like on the staff that we had our technical practices ensure that it happens. And then the last thing is it really gave our teachers a guide to support all students. And one thing we also have been really working on is making sure that we are providing support and scaffolds for our students who may need a little more support. 
but then bring in that gifted and higher achiever aspect. So Tiffany Buchanan also pays attention to what is it having teachers do with our higher level students and is their ability for tests and things that are going to grow our high achievers. So all that being said, this is the great thing that h and continues to offer um, and that they would like to offer more about as well. We did a feedback. So we've had multiple presentations. Our committee had presentations. They provided feedback multiple times. We also did something different this time because this was a product that already many of our teachers were using. We even sent out a survey to our already using product teachers. So they already said they found that they enjoy this product. They found it does have great things about it. And so this was another reason our committee felt like it was great to bring the staff. So we did have um, a, another additional vendor presentation where 16 additional teachers attended. We also had some materials access. And out of all of the people who attended and responded to our survey, 100% of the staff indoors um, also selecting literature. We did have a community, community survey out there, but as of up to today, we did not have any feedback on the um, survey. So that's the 11-12 ELA um, adoption recommendation. The other side of the presentation is the exciting things that have to do with the previous presentation about our learning recovery plan and how we're going to continue to ensure that we're supporting all of our learners, not just students who may have had gaps due to anything related to COVID or anything related to how our instruction has kind of changed back and forth in general. This is about making sure our kids, no matter if they're lower or higher or in the middle, are being provided enough opportunities to continue to grow amongst this year and beyond. So the first um, column you're going to see is one really exciting piece that actually our K-5 math teachers found when we were reviewing for our math program. This is Davis Success Maker, and it is a digitalized platform for practice you probably have seen lots of kids on many different practice sites and many different things that have to either look like games or they might be practicing skills. This is a standards-based engaging game-like system, but it's different in that it adapts exactly to where the kids' path needs to go. So in this case, you're going to find a few takes a little uh, initial placement, and then their path is created. On top of that, this path can be personalized and aligned to our K-5 math program as well as additional um, programs that are out there so that if there are specific units or practice skills or even um, some of the standards that might be they need even more practice with, the teacher can create a course-like path to have that student continue to practice and be things with. I talked to other districts who use this, and they were blown away by how much their kids wanted to do it. And so we're going to be using this not only for um, access during the summer, so that kids can get on and practice throughout the summer, even if they're in summer school, even if they're not in the summer academy, but we're going to continue this and, and purchase this hopefully for the next several years. So that this is a part of more so what we do to provide our students additional purposeful, adaptive practice for all levels of students, not just intervention students. So that is one great thing we would like to do. The other thing that we are doing is with our Summer Learning Academy, we wanted to make sure that our teachers and our students had evidence-based um, curriculum for summer school. So this is a program that has both print and digital materials. One key thing that, that we really like about this is that it's real, it encourages scholastic, it has real text with it, it has real math manipulators with it. It has kids working in the lower levels with hands-on, multi-sensory type features for phonics instruction. So it's basically a shortened version of a more explicit um, curriculum that is going to benefit our kids during the summer academy, and it is something that we can use multiple summers. So it's not like this is one and done. And then the last thing is something that many of our, or our schools already are using, but maybe not everybody had a chance to use it. Um, it is learning A to Z. Our special education department teachers, many of these teachers have utilized it, and it's a request to get often. 
from our building principal. So it is a platform that basically has a variety of literacy, either um, strategies for teachers or resources or lessons, but then additional printable, portable text and access for kids to practice reading and record themselves and the teachers can hear them. Um, it, it's one that is really engaging to students and has been around for a while, but now we're going to provide it hopefully for multiple years and for everybody. So professional development obviously is always on our mind because we want to make sure we are supporting our teachers in initial implementation as well as ongoing. So your into literature is going to give you your normal getting started as well as ongoing professional development opportunities <coughs> both virtual and hopefully eventually in person um, within the next several years to facilitate implementation. And then the additional other side for any of the things that we are providing for the learning support for right now or after summer, we're going to provide staff with that training as well as utilization for students on how to use those platforms. And wrapping it up, we're talking about material costs. So our, our internet into literature is getting the same type of package that we found with most of our adoptions. Our six-year adoption, like all of our other locations, where they're going to get print teacher editions, that new writable text, digital access for everybody, and we're looking at $204,589.80. And that shows you also how we broke up 11 and 12 grade, and we are using our general fund for this purpose. The other side is kind of a, a different purchase that all come up with one cost. But the largest cost, as you can see, is that online success maker, because it is going to scan all of our students, kindergarten through eighth grade. And they are going to get access for ELA and math. The next one is your summer school curriculum. And then the last one is just that extra reading um, opportunity for our students K-4. And that is all going to be funded through our effort that we were granted. Final considerations, really it just goes back to that we want to help continue to improve student achievement. And to do that, we know we have to have a process in place to get curriculum in the hands of our teachers, and then the opportunity for the students to have access to it. So we will continue to follow this process. We're going to continue to make sure that we're transparent and that the public has the opinion on the entire process and what we come up with. And then lastly, we are wanting to make sure that we can continue sustainability. So I always look to negotiate um, ways that we can make sure that our commitment can continue beyond just you know, what we're looking at the six year adoption. So that is what we are recommending tonight. Excellent. Excellent. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Not a lot of info in a short period of time. Uh, I, I, I like it. Anytime you can get a, a, a find a product that maybe I'll get a kid interested in reading. I think that's outstanding. And uh, from the phrase that you sent earlier, it sounds like this might be the, the, the deal and the, the work. So, so thank you for finding it and sharing it with us, John. I appreciate that. I like the whole rotation. And finally, art's in it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, that's a 1976. Wow. I'm glad they're in it. And that, like I said, I like the whole rotation. Continue on. Uh, things change a lot as we move through the years and keeping up with them and keeping up with the changes and the technology I think is vital for the kids. And good job. How, how did we track down 1976? Like JPEG. Wow. Yep. It's interesting because... I, I, I so yesterday I was with, a, yeah, I was with middle school today, high school yeah. yesterday, <laughs> and I was talking about how it was the same registration guide from when I graduated. Just the art part, not the rest. And uh, he was like, I'll go a step further with you, Tiffany. Um, so he said the only thing that really was added was the topics of art. Um, so, yeah, it, it's definitely wow. a big purchase yeah. for That's awesome. You know, I also think it, it, it really is also a compliment to our, our teachers who have clearly had to try to be innovative without a whole lot of support from, from us. And really, have, have, I think, done a good job. I mean, yeah. they, they have been engaging, they have been creative, but. And it's also a compliment to Tiffany to say, we have to get these people some, some 
the better resources to actually enter, I don't know, 1994 at least. Um, so thank you for all of your work. That'd be a pretty good increase I right there. I do have one quick question. The Scholastic Bell Excel, so I know that'll be the summer school curriculum. Are any of those resources going to be available to like any student in the district, or is that specifically going to be for the so kids? There's, there's different parts to it. There okay. are parts that probably, because the way school is going to be a Right. So we could utilize some of it during like our intervention time or if, if you wanted to do like our high time within elementary. So there are parts, but truly the way that it's created is for that, that, that timeline of the summer school. So it would be, yes, a lot of the resources to be used, but if you wanted to just take it, you probably would use them. Perfect. And the write in text, we have several younger kids, and the write in text is phenomenal. Like, they dog ear it. I have the last, like, all their reading books. We keep them because that's, like, they're practicing. But Scarlett particularly will highlight words. She's not truly, under, like, she doesn't understand the full context of it. And we'll bring it home and, like, look it up on her phone. And I think that that's important because then she can understand where they're going later on. But just for them to be able to, like, highlight, circle, it's their own. They own it. And... And you, mean, you guys know this, but some of our students don't own books. So this is, even if that's the only book they own, it's got such a plethora of literature. I'm excited about all of it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Smilak. Uh, communications this evening, Mrs. Garfus. Um, the only thing I really have, and I think everybody's kind of aware of it, um, is the uh, students that reached out in regards to um, the holiday, eat up the tour, um, and uh, one of the young ladies we're going to be um, talking to tomorrow um, to hopefully be a training member of all committee at the school level and um, see what else we can do to kind of work within the framework of everything we have going on in the school district right now because I think there's some excellent outlets for her. But I know we have some more context about that later. Um, so Yeah, we will have. That's really all I have. Uh, well, thank you. Any, anything else? Treasurer? Yes. Um, the Auger State approved our independent audit that was conducted by Rain Associates on Monday. It's not been released onto the website, but it's been officially approved by them. They just have to they release reports on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it wasn't there today. It could be there Tuesday, hopefully. But as I talked to about a month ago, we got an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion. We had no citations or significant deficiencies, and there was no management letter. So it was pretty pretty good for the audit report. Also, they institute something called a STARS system where they grade us based on your transparency. And if there's seven categories, if you get five out of seven, you get four stars. It, it deals with public records, are your uh, reports available online, or is the agenda online, or minutes online. And so we got four stars, and sure. that's a lot of the mainly thanks to Pam, because she controls a lot of the public records. So it was a pretty good audit. And what's the most stars you can get? Four. We four. got? We got four. four How many four. things did we get in the report? All seven. None. Oh, no, man. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, dings. Dings. How many? Dings. Oh, dings. 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 None. No, so no, no dings, dings and dings. highest out of highest. Yes, no seven out of seven. Out of and was it an independent audit? It's an independent audit. It was an independent audit. By Rain Associates. Yeah, so can I, can I just sort of elaborate it's a little amazing. bit? It's amazing. The, the yeah. management letter... Is, is simply recommendation of best practices. So, you know, the audit itself, if there's substantive findings, and those are things you have to fix. And then there's a management letter that just says, you know, you, you could probably do this too. This is my fifth audit as a superintendent. Never before have I heard of any audit not having a management letter. I mean, and that means that they, they that, that's like taking a look at a, a course of study and saying, I can't even make any specific recommendation. I mean, it, that is unheard of, and, and it, it really is a great compliment to you, also to our board, also to our senior leadership team and our principals. I mean, you know, Sean can do whatever he wants, but other people have to buy into that too. Um, 
before we you know we have serious issues. So it really is a testimony to the district working together on that fiscal responsibility. But ultimately, Sean, you lead that, and and it's congratulations. I've never heard of no management letter. That, that's just phenomenal. Thanks First you. time for me ever. Really, it's great. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, I almost feel like standing up to one of these. That is amazing. I mean, I've been around this game for a long, 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 long time, and uh, we'll just leave it with what Charlie said. Just absolutely amazing. Congratulations to all, because you're right. It's a team effort. You know, doesn't take. I mean, one person can lead the charge, but uh, it takes a team to pull that off. And extremely well done. Thank you. Uh, any other communication this evening? Any amendments this evening? No amendments. I used to lick in my fingers. <laughs> no amendments. Uh, public participation? Not on any agenda items. Only on the agenda items. Do we have any of that this evening? No, not on the agenda None of those. I move to then adopt resolution 2021-04137, approval of the written record of proceedings for the March 25th, 2014. We don't want to say March 25th, 2014, do we? 2021. 2021. <laughs> Regular and special Board of Education meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2021-04137. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio? Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Resolution 2021-04137 has been approved. Moves us to curriculum. Mr. Vaughn? Thank you, Mr. Schweitzer. I move to make a, a move to adopt resolution 2021-04-138, approve of overnight out-of-state field trips. Second. A motion to second for 2021 04 Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio? Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021 04 138 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 20, 2021 04 139, approval of K 8 English language arts, math, and social studies emotional learning summer curriculum material. Second. We have a motion and second for 2021-04-139. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio? Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-139 has been approved. I move to adopt <coughs> resolution 2021-04-140, approval of K-8 English language arts and math learning software. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-140. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio? Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-140 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-141, authorizing purchase of 3D printer. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-141. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-141 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-142, authorizing purchase of Apple MacBooks. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-142. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-142 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-143, authorizing purchase of digital camera. Second. A motion and a second for 2021-04-143. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio? Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes, 2021-04-143 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-144, authorizing purchase of laser engraver. Second. A motion and second for 2021-04-144. Questions or comments? Mr. Nucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. 
Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-144 has been. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-145, authorizing purchase of XP graphic drawing tables. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-145. Questions or comments? Did you say tables or tablets? Uh, I think we did tables. Tablets. 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 Oh, sorry, I read. That's okay. I it is tablets, but I should have read tablets and I read tables. <laughs> That's okay. It means you're hungry. I buy for you. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. We have a motion and a second, correct? Yes. yes. Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Tablets. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-145 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-146, the approval of grade 11, 12, language arts adoption. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-146. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio? Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Rotz? Yes. Mrs. Carpus? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-146 has been approved. Uh, unless another board member has anything to discuss, this concludes the curriculum for this evening. Thank you very much, and uh, again, thank you to the curriculum department. Uh, everything's just been approved. We can now move forward. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Christ, business? Uh, I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-147, authorizing renewal of facilities usage agreement between the City of Parma, School District, School District Board of Education and University Settlement, Inc. Second. A uh, motion and second for resolution 2021-04-147. Are there any questions or comments? I do. This is a collab. It is? Okay. It's just under the different. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> that was mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nusia. Yeah. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-147 has been approved. Uh, unless another board member has anything to discuss, this concludes business for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Christ, but right back at you with finance. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-148, approval of the March 2020 financial report. Second. We have should a motion. Should that be 2021? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. 2021 okay. financial. Okay. Excuse second. Good catch. <laughs> we are so out of practice. Okay. <laughs> well, I had the one that said 2014. Uh, okay. 2020, resolution 2021-04-148 uh, has been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? I just want to thank Sean for, I mean, as always, with the super comprehensive report for us to stay on top of everything. And it leaves very little room for miscommunication for us. I, think I try to know. simplify it so the average reader can understand it. That's good for me. Thank you. <laughs> I, was just, I was just going to say that. That's probably good for all of us except for Jack. <laughs> it's too complex. They're easy to it's understand. If it's too complex, it's, it's too big to get out of it. Right. That's yeah. something I noticed right away coming on how user friendly you made yes. these financial yeah. Yeah, That's the better word, user friendly. <laughs> well, yeah. That was very good. All right. I don't know. You guys get a big hit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let a new roll call then. All right. Mr. Nusio. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Brox. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04148 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-149, ratification of investments. Second. Okay. A motion and a second for 2021-04-149. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-149 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-150, approval of supplemental appropriations. Second. A yeah, motion and a second for 2021-04-150. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. 
This is Bratz. Yes. This is Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes, 2021-04-150 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-151, authorization to accept activity purpose statement. Second. A motion a second for 2021-04-151. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes, 2021-04-151 has been approved. I move to adopt the resolution 2021-04-152, acceptance of contributions and donations. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-152. Uh, questions or comments? As usual, I'd uh, thank the community for uh, their kind of thoughtfulness uh, of remembering a pharmacy school district with their donations. Um, the anonymous one, uh, oh my goodness, you know, that's a lot of money. It's huge to donate. And uh, Mr. Castleberry, that's awesome. Three of the water bottles are all the rage and are important with the health and safety right now. But thanks for the don't. Uh, I that's just thank you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, for the monitor. We use families who cannot pay for tuition instead. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, that's nice. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Nuccio. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Carpus. Yes. And Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04152 has been approved. Unless another board member has anything to discuss, this concludes finance for this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Price. The legis any le is there a legislative report this evening? Mrs. Carpus or Mrs. Bratz? There is. Um, Dr. Schmidt has been wonderful about setting us um, legislative updates about what's happening kind of um, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to briefly highlight House Bill 10, uh, or 110, I'm sorry, um, and it combines a multitude of things, the fair funding plan, um, some of the tax relief, the COVID-19 relief grants, and some government um, like oversight and accountability. And the K-12 through piece, um, I'm just going to read this little piece of it. The fair school funding plan is a historic initiative it is as a result of educators and policymakers working for more than three years towards a common goal, improving education for Ohio students. This will be phased in over six years, beginning with the 2021-22 school year. It is designed to ensure no school district loses funding during the transition to a new formula. The plan reduces duplicative, duplicative, uh, duplicative operational city, cities in Ohio's education funding model. By maintaining the governor's proposed student wellness and success funding, but encompasses that much more needed support within the main formula. Uh, no school district loses any funding during the phase in. Is there a short-term transitional payment <coughs> um, included in the implementation? Joint vocational schools will also receive transition, transitional funding. Um, the community schools will receive an accelerated phase in for disadvantaged people in Pact A. Um, However, some community schools may show a reduction due to projected student count shifts that occurred during this pandemic. <coughs> um, it outlines several different things um, included, including um, it's going to require a College Credit Plus program, the Department of Education and Higher Education to jointly develop a permission slip regarding potential for uh, mature subject matter in courses. Um, it's going to require school districts and chartered non-public high schools to inform students um, grade 6 through eight, six through 11 of advanced standing programs annually um, requires school districts to spend the gifted funds it receives under the school funding formula on the identification of gifted students, <coughs> gifted coordinator services, gifted intervention ser specialist services, and other service providers adopted um, by the Department of Education uh, appropriates $2.5 million in each fiscal year to supplement payments the dropout prevention and recovery e-schools participating in the pilot program increases the college credit plus program by a million dollars to support homeschool students there's a lot of different things happening in this bill um, yes and it's kind of all these things converging into one space so it's going to be very interesting to watch so i strongly encourage anyone following this to keep an eye on it if i can uh, just add and thank you for your summary uh, this is uh, largely the um, Recreation of House Bill 305, which was the Cup Patterson bill, and uh, under that bill, we stood to gain 8.33 million per year. So, it would certainly be a 
help to us. And we're always, anytime we hear the school funding fix, while certainly we want a better formula, we also get nervous because 8.33 million is, is really great, but over a course of time, we're still going to run into a, a point where we need an operating money. And our fear is always without a very significant fix. You know, the public here is, well, if they fix school funding, we never have to vote yes on a levy again. And that, that's not, this would help. But when we look out to 2025 and see a $25 million deficit, I mean, it, that's going to almost close it, right? But you've still got some needs. So it, 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 it's, it's very complex. We're appreciative of the work that Columbus is doing to improve, but we also have to be honest with our communities in that improvement does not equal the perfection to the point of not needing property tax levels. Right. Good point. Very, very true. Important. Um, Ms. Brock, do you have anything? No, just uh, thank you also to Dr. Smiler for um, providing us with a lot of information about uh, the legislative uh, uh, activity that uh, he's been exposed to. So it sounds great, but this is very complex. There's a whole lot of stuff in this here, bill. As I read it, it's really a lot. I'm hopeful that we get anywhere near the eight. Well, and, and interestingly enough, they, they tacked in right the, the tax cut. Yeah. So you know, certainly a carrot for what is a conservative legislature right now. But now the Senate, and the Senate all along has been really the watchdog in terms of how does this really work in the budget. Right. So thank you to the House for their work, but now let's see how uh, your big brothers and sisters in the Senate proceed with this. Mr. Schweitzer, before we continue, yes. I have to step away because my uh, motherly duties are calling tonight. Um, so uh, Mr. Bond is going to take over policy for me. Okay. Duly noted. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. How could he be here? Hope everything works out. Thank you. Happy birthday to Haley. Yeah. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. She that said three us. separate teachers saying to her today. So. <laughs> that moves us to human resources, Mrs. Bratz. Thank you, Mr. Schweitzer. I move for the adoption of resolution 2021-04153, approval of the following certificated exhibits. Confirmation of stipend amounts, confirmation of substitute teacher appointments, approval of certificate of non-compensated leaves of absence, and confirmation of supplemental appointments. Second. I have a motion and second for 2021-04153. Questions or comments? Mr. Musio? Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04153 has been approved. I move for the adoption of Resolution 2021-04154, Recommendation for Continuing Contract. Second. I have a motion and a second for 2021-04154. Questions or comments? Mr. Nuzio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04154 has been approved. I move for the adoption of Resolution 2021-04155, Acceptance of Certificated Retirement. Second. I have a motion and a second for 2021-04155. Questions or comments? Who is that? That's uh, Deb Pundle? Uh, second. Counselor, Counselor Norman. Norman. Yeah. yeah. She was with her for a lot of years. Still good. She was there about 20 yeah, years. Still, yeah, sorry. Still good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Point of clarification. And I'll shut up the rest of the Don't forget that tip for waitress. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Tally <laughs> voter. <laughs> Mr. Nuzio? Mr. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04155 has been on the center. I move to adopt Resolution 2021-04156, Creation of Extended School Year, ESY, Coordinator Position, and Adoption of Job Description. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04156. Questions or comments? Mr. Lucio. 
Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-156 has been approved. I move for the adoption <coughs> of resolution 2021-04-157, approval of the following classified exhibits. Confirmation of classified appointments re replacements. Confirmation of change of classified assignments. Approval of classified non-compensated leaves of absence. And confirmation of classified resignation. Second. A motion is second for 2021-04-157. Questions or comments? Mr. Nuccio. I did have, oh, I did I'm sorry. Have a comment. Are we going to talk about Mr. Caputo there? Uh, uh, certainly. That's, uh, that's certainly a loss to our... Uh, oh, yeah. Place. Yeah, you know, transportation um, is really an often overlooked function of a school district in, in terms of how many logistics go into managing the transportation of approximately 4,500 students in our district. And I, I, I hate to say this because I don't want it to sound too simplistic, but probably the best compliment to Angelo is that we hear almost nothing about transportation. And that's not easily done when you manage over 100 buses, over 100 bus drivers, over six or seven mechanics, and do so in a way that is extremely self-sufficient. Um, you know, there, there are mornings where Angelo's getting in a bus and driving and taking routes himself. Um, school's the same. Um, it, it, it's only getting more difficult to fill um, uh, spots, driver spots. Um, and that's not unique to Parma. Uh, that, that's many school districts right now. And so that just continues to really force our administration to be more and more creative. And so the level of service that Angelo has provided uh, in, in the two and a half years since he's come back to us and I know the years before um, he had left for some time have just been exemplary. Um, and, and I think you don't know that in, until you, you don't have it. Uh, kind of like the right guard uh, on an offensive line. You know, When that guard goes down and somebody can't block, when that quarterback's getting sacked all the time. Angelo's been phenomenal. Um, he has a phenomenal career opportunity in front of him. Uh, he will manage as a, a vice president, uh, a private transportation provider in Pennsylvania where his mother lives. Um, he will essentially be in charge of six Angelos that will all report to him. And so he'll continue to make you know, an impact on children through the provision of efficient service. Uh, we will miss him. And we hope to be able to attain someone of his quality uh, to be able to, to put him in this position. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. That's yes. a big loss. That is a big loss for us. I can remember meeting um, Angelo when he first came to the district, and we served on the facilities committee together. And I was always impressed with his knowledge and uh, contributions and kind of wide vision. Um, in creative vision, thinking about problem solving, and uh, really thought he was such a good fit for us. I'm so disappointed to see him go. But yeah, it's wish a, him well, sir. It's almost a, there's a bit of deja vu here, as uh, you mentioned. You don't know what you have till they're gone, mm -hmm. and we learned that once, <laughs> and hopefully we're not going to learn it again as a, a replacement. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to move forward. But congratulations. He deserves it. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Nuzio? Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-157 has been approved. I move for the adoption of resolution 2021-04-158, acceptance of classified retirement. Second. Motion is second for 2021-04-158. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Lucio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-158 has been approved. I move for the adoption of resolution 2021-04-159, confirmation of classified appointment. Second. A motion and second to 2021-04-159. Questions or comments? 
Lucio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Kreis. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021 has been approved. Um, I do have one question, Dr. Smilik. Is um, when will uh, Mr. Caputo be finished? Uh, not until mm -hmm. mid June. Oh, okay. So we've, already, we've actually already posted the position, so he will help with the transition. Okay, great. Right. I didn't see that exact date. Uh, thank you. Well, unless there are any other uh, comments or questions by board members, uh, that concludes human resources for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Bratz. Policies this evening, and Mr. Vaughn. Yes, you know? sir. We have quite a few policy changes today. I do want to make note that they are mostly inert changes, grammatical errors, that kind of thing, from the OLA and this improvement in terminology uh, overall. So, with that being said, I will start this off. Uh, move to adopt resolution 2021-04-160, approve our revised policy 1422, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. Second. Second. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I did that to Mr. Price. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just didn't want to. No, I know. You're hanging good. out there. Yeah, so Resolution 2021-04-160. Motion and a second. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-160 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-161, approve or revise policy 3122, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Nusio? Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Schweitzer? Yes. 2021-04-161 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-162, approval of revised policy 4122, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. Second. Motion and a second for 2021-04-162. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-162 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-163, approval of revised policy 6144, investments. Second. We have a motion and a second for 2021-04-163. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I beat you, didn't I? You did. <laughs> Metal <laughs> stairs coming up the line. <laughs> hey, Simultaneously. Speed it up, man. Uh, Mr. Price. I knew this was Yes. 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 2021-04-163 has been approved. John, you uh, wait, wait. speed it up there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, move to adopt resolution 2021-04-164. Approve our revised policy 6152, student fees, fines, and charges. Second. Motion second for 2021-04-164. Questions or comments? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-164 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-165, approval or revised policy 6220, tax budget preparation. Second. Motion and second for 2021-04-165. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-165. That's been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-166. Approve or revise policy 6325. Procurement of federal grants funds. Second. Motion and second for 2021-04-166. Any questions or comments? <laughs> Mr. Nusio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2021-04-166 has been approved. Check that. Okay. I move to adopt resolution 2021-04-167, approval or revised policy 8450.01, protect the facial coverings during pandemic epidemic. Second. We have a motion and second for 2021-04-167. 
Any questions or comments? That's not revising an old one. No, that's, that's a, a new one. That's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> it says revised. You know, the policy well, that. they probably had something before that yeah. didn't actually have to take place. Mr. Lucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. 2020-104-167 has been approved. Uh, unless anyone else has uh, something to discuss the policy, this concludes policy. Thank you very much. Any other any other information requested by board members this evening? Seeing none, this is the opportunity to have questions and concerns run into the record. And I believe we have 12 this evening. Uh, correct, and I will read these verbatim. Uh, they're email, mostly. So... The letters are small. Bear with me. <laughs> oh, okay. So is that 13? Yes. We now have 13. Okay, I will do my best. First one. First is from uh, Allison Mendoza, 6609 Thoreau, Park, Thoreau Drive, Thoreau Park. Uh, Parma, Ohio, 44129. Uh, hi, I'm currently a junior at Normandy High School and I had a question I wanted to put forward to the board. Uh, why are we unable to cancel school on uh, Eid al Fatur to accommodate our Muslim students? Our student calendar already accommodates Christian holidays sometimes with week-long breaks in the case of Christmas. So there's no reason we can't cancel one day of school to accommodate Muslim students in the same way. I encourage you to seek out and listen to Muslim voices before reaching a decision on this. Thank you, Allison Mendoza. Next is from May, or my, it's M-A-I, Mustafa, uh, 5943 Pearl Road. Regarding the petition signed by many students and parents in the Parma City School District requesting uh, Eid al Fatur uh, be a day off for students, why is it that you feel as though you can't change the schedule to accommodate student needs when you've shown all throughout the year that you can change dates that were set in place if you so chose, such, in a com such as commencement? You clearly can change the date to accommodate students who merely want to celebrate their holiday without stress, the same way Christians in the district are able to, do, able to do during their winter and spring breaks, even if it is a coincidence that Christmas and Easter fall into those breaks. It's unfair that Christians get weeks to spend celebrating, and yet you can't find it in yourself to have a simple vote to give us Muslim students uh, one day. Thank you for your time. This one's tiny. Sorry. That is small. Oh, wow. Uh, Zaina Al Tahir, uh, A L uh, hyphen T H T A H E R. Uh, if I bashed it, I'm sorry. At 6528 Kingsdale Boulevard, Parma Heights, Ohio. Uh, my name is Zaina Al Tahir. I am a junior at Valley Forge High School. I had a couple of questions regarding E L Couture. I was curious as to why all year we are able to constantly make sudden changes to the school's calendar. But all of a sudden, school cannot be called off and eat El Fatur. It is a very important holiday for us Muslim students. I do not think that it is fair that the Parma City School District accommodates Christian holidays and not others. Personally, I feel like the board could cancel school and eat El Fatur, but they are, but they are no, because it would be inconvenient for them to actually do it. Olivia Grimes Clark. Uh, 6467 Lawnwood, Parma Heights. I'll find it. <laughs> I'd like to contextualize my question with the events of the past school year. No schedule has been permanent for very long. Both students and teachers have been left ill-advised on what will happen going forward and, this, and left in utter chaos. And that's left many well-performing students in rough spots academically. The 
Put it simply, the schedule of the district has been nothing short of adaptable, to put it mildly. My question is then this. Why in a school year that has been riddled with sweeping schedule changes, has a district decided to do it, deny a request by petition, one with the backing of 2,000 to provide students of the district a day off and eat El Fatur, a prominent holiday? would very much appreciate an explanation and clarification beyond it's hard to change the schedule. Because while that may be correct, it's alienating a substantial group of the student body that who either is actively Muslim or whose family is Muslim, while also outright ignoring a demand of the student body after they have been put through nothing short of a hill during the school year uh, and last. Thank you for your reading. Am I able to take this off to read? Absolutely. <laughs> Bonsoir. Okay. Okay. okay, this is from Zaina Asi, uh, 6907 Revere, Parma Heights. Uh, da, da, da. Why must we be required to come to school on a religious holiday to Muslims? Why does the school system only focus on Christian holidays? Why can't Muslims have one day off for EID? That's, you know, short, I guess, for Yid al Fatur, uh, which is something special to us. This is from Sanibel Leland, 7559 Pleasant Hill Drive, Parma. Uh, if we get two weeks off around Christmas time, a Christian holiday, why can't we take off one day to celebrate Eid al Fitur, a Muslim holiday? This is from Sanibel. Well, it's from the same person, 7959. Uh, this second one says, why do we only accommodate Christian holidays? when we also have a large percentage of Muslim students. It's a slightly different. Another from Santa Bill Whelan, uh, from 7559 Pleasant Hill Drive. Why must Muslim students continue to have to choose between missing schoolwork or celebrating a holiday? This is from Musaba Beach, uh, 7568 York Road, Parma, Ohio. Hey, Parma School Board just had a quick question. Why do you favor Christian holidays over any other holiday? We have no problem giving out two-week Christmas break. Um, Christmas, Christmas break. Wait, I'm so sorry. Let me rephrase that. Winter break, but can't give one day for the fellow Muslims who fast in 30 days. Funny we asked for one day, and you can't give it that to us. However, you can give two-week Christmas break, uh, one-week Thanksgiving break. We can celebrate Halloween, Valentine's Day, all of them at school since we've been in elementary school, but can't do nothing for the Muslims, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Parma. Next one is from Madeline Class, 9383 Lynn Haven Road, Parma Heights. Hello, I am submitting this comment for the school board meeting tomorrow, submitted yesterday. With all due respect, I think it is an absolute outrage that Muslim students cannot have the day off for Eid al-Fatur. I notice that our principal says that any Muslim student uh, can be excused for their holiday, but being excused from school is not what they are asking for. They are asking for academic relief, and to be treated like their holiday matters, as Christian holidays do. From growing up, I remember being so relieved to spend Christmas and Easter with my family and not having any schoolwork to do. Not only do Muslim students have to miss a day, but they also have to make up whatever they miss when they come back. One day of makeup work might not seem like a lot, but it really is. I think they'd like to feel the relief that all Christians did growing up to be able to spend their holiday at home without schoolwork in the back of their mind. I also find it ridiculous how the calendar cannot be changed until 2022-2023, considering how much it has changed just this year. We've gone from remote learning, hybrid learning, in-person throughout this year, and many changes were made. I find it very hard to believe that one day cannot be taken off in honor of Muslim holidays. I thought schools were supposed to encourage equality and equal opportunities. This is from Nicholas uh, Gemelas, G-E-M-E-L-A-S, 
10224 North Church Drive, Parma Heights. And Eid al-Fitur is the most important holiday in the Islamic calendar. This is the only day where Muslim brothers and sisters can celebrate the end of Ramadan and when the Muslim community unites to celebrate the end of a fasting period. Why is that we have days off only for Christian holidays? Uh, why was there never a day off on Eid al-Fitur? Islam is the second largest religion in the world, and yet the school districts still continue to ignore the most celebrated holiday in the Islamic calendar. Eid is a time for to celebrate with your family, bring peace to the table, donate to the needy, and most of all, thank Allah for all the blessings. All we ask is one day off for Eid al-Fitur. How hard can that be? One day off will not ruin the whole schedule, and if you continue to say it does, then we most certainly know that the school is just ignoring us. Please give us the day we need to spend time with our family and friends. Thank you, and may Allah bless you. This is from Vera Bruner, 6451 Kearneywood Road, Parma. It is outrageous that we can have off for every Christian holiday, but not a single holiday for any other religion. I am so angered at the fact that the school refuses to make a simple adjustment uh, to our fancy little schedule for something that is completely necessary. Just because it isn't important to you doesn't mean it doesn't matter. Christian opinion shouldn't be above anybody else's. It's a single day for you all to take off, and if you refuse to make this official, please at least use a calamity day as we have many, many left. It is so offensive of you, of you all to dismiss anything that wasn't made specifically for white people. It's simply outrageous. If you won't listen to the minorities contacting you, here I am using my voice so that someone will listen. Here, Brunner, Valley Forge High School. This is Mia Brunner, 6451 Kearney Wood Road. Why can't even one day of school be canceled for Muslim students? Why are accommodations only made for Christian holidays? I was 13, communications and all, I read verbatim. Um, thank you to all those who wrote in with, with the concern. Um, certainly understand where, where you're coming from. Uh, do we have a response to that this evening? Sure. Uh, it's my life. Yeah, no, I, I, I always appreciate uh, especially when students take the time to uh, address concerns in, in a very formal, uh, manner, very respectful manner, and I think it shows a lot about their their character and, and how they are becoming you know, active citizens, uh, so I'm appreciative of that. I, I first want to address um, the flexibility of the schedule. Uh, you know, typically we don't move schedules as, as much as we did this year. Uh, we move schedules this year largely because of, well, actually exclusively because of COVID and the concerns that COVID presented. Typically, a, a calendar is adopted by at least uh, mid-January of the previous year for the, for the next school year. Uh, that's what we've done in the case of the 2021-22 school year. Uh, so, you know, specifically in terms of some of the, the concerns about, you know, how, how calendars are, are so just able to be changed on a, on a dime's notice. Uh, this year, that was unique to COVID, and we, we wouldn't normally do that. Uh, secondly, I, I want to address the fact that this is a difficult proposition for any school district, any business. Uh, we have a very wide number of religions. When you look at across at 9,300 students, um, you're, you're going to come across many different nationalities, many different religions, especially in urban areas such as, such as Parma. And so um, it, the point is well taken in that our calendar does largely uh, honor a, a Christian um, paradigm, especially specifically the you know, Good Friday and you know, the day after Easter. Um, but I would say that there are many different religions, and we need to be cognizant of the fact that giving all um, religious holidays off would, would really open us up to a, to a, a wide number of days that we wouldn't be having school. Um, so it is, it is difficult to just say, well, you know, we'll, we'll honor that. I mean, we have Jewish students, um, we have Orthodox uh, Christians, and, and Orthodox Christians have in the past made uh, 
questions to me about, you know, can we honor their calendars better? Um, I will say that what these students have brought does show the need for more inclusion of more voices into the school calendar committee. Um, in all honesty, I've, I've led the school calendar process uh, since I've been here. And for the most part, we have almost cut and paste last year's calendar, adjust the dates, and roll it out, maybe have a couple different versions of teachers vote on, and, and that's what we do. Um, and what these students have done tonight is to show the need to be more inclusive of a wider range of voices into that process. And so with that in mind, um, I'm going to take those 13 emails, and I think Mr. Barkowski sent, them, sent those to us this morning, um, and I will happily meet with the folks that sent in to learn more myself, um, in all honesty, uh, until these this string of emails came in, I was relatively ignorant of the importance of this date. So I would like to learn more myself. Now, please understand that does not commit uh, to anything in terms of a change. Uh, I, I do not foresee a circumstance under which we would change the calendar this year, especially given uh, the nature of, of finals coming up, senior finals coming up. I mean, May in a high school is one of the most demanding months of any organization in, in our society. Um, so we will not change you know, the calendar this year on, on you know, at this point. However, I do want to hear more uh, from this group of students, specifically these people that, 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 that sent in these concerns. But I also want that to mobilize in the future a more inclusive approach to building a school calendar. Thank you, Dr. Smilak, for that, uh, for that response. Uh, I, I think I agree. Um, the word that came to my mind as I read through these today was awareness. And I think that's what you were referring to. Uh, sometimes somebody just has to shake you a little bit and make you aware uh, you know, of something that maybe you weren't you know, considering strongly before. And I agree that you know, we're to a point in the school year where uh, I don't think that can happen. But. Uh, uh, I would like to also volunteer if you have that meeting. I would be willing to attend that as well uh, because I'm always interested in learning. I think I could learn something from that, and maybe there's something that can be done as we move into the future. So, yeah, and I appreciate your, your presence and, and, and your offer. And so, I, I will uh, develop a day to be in contact with these uh, folks that study. Thank you. Is there, yeah, have you, uh, have any of our neighboring school systems done anything for this holiday? Not uh, to my knowledge, but it can be part of our research. Yeah, I was thinking like North Olmsted, I don't have a high population. Yeah. So I was wondering if they did something specific for, for students or not. Yeah. The, one, the one piece I, I want to point out to you, though, we, you know, we do have a religious observance, uh, you know, excusable for absence. So yes. I, I, there isn't a punishment. I understand that, you know, that's. They, they recommend that they So that's not what they were asking they for. Still right? have to, yeah, they still have to make up, and I just wanted to clarify that it is an excuse that Yes. Correct. Right. Any other questions, comments, regarding the things read into the record? Seeing none, I move to adopt Resolution 2021-04169 to adjourn this meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2021-04169. Questions or comments? Mr. Nuccio? Mr. Schweitzer. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Schweitzer. Oh, I already said Mr. Schweitzer. I'm sorry. Rots. This Rots. is Rots. <laughs> I was going to stand here. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Resolution 2021-04169 has been approved. This meeting is adjourned.